מצחיק בדיוק, אתה יודע, זה לא סביר. אוקיי, so uh, for uh, last but not least, uh, speaker, it's uh, Daniel Ashwal. Uh, she's a product manager at Microsoft Defender for IoT, and uh, you know one of the biggest, I don't know, one of the biggest, but one of the problems we have, we have many problems in robotics. One of the problems we have also is cyber, and how to uh, work with it, and how to actually enter it in our uh, um, products, especially before it becomes a real problem, real problem, uh, when we cannot deploy our robots anymore, and this is something we should think about. quite ahead of the development. And um, so, Daniel, thank you. Okay, so, like this, it's, it's okay, right? Okay. Um, so today I'm going to discuss with you about how to secure your robots for malicious attack. Um, my name is Daniel Ashwal, and I'm a product manager already few years, I think more than 10 years in the security industry here in Israel, mostly. Um, I used to work with uh, many customers abroad, um, for Checkpoint, for Teammate, and today for Microsoft. And uh, I'd like to start, but before we're starting, I'd like to ask you uh, uh, one question. How many people here know Altos operation system? Okay, that's a good thing. How many of you are making sure that you're using the latest ARTO system, including all the security recommendations? Okay, so we have something to discuss about. <laughs> um, so, as you know, today, the number of unmanaged IoT and OT devices, and also part of it is the robotic devices, because many of them are smart devices. Most of the devices that we used to see on the latest years are kind of, I don't want to say stupid, but I'll say stupid. And today, most of the devices that we are seeing are much more smarter. Uh, we see devices that are building automations, they're doing things in a much more effective way. And by, uh, by doing that, they're actually improving the value and also increasing the cost to all the customers that you are seeing on, I'm guessing, weekly or monthly basis. However, the growth of this kind of devices is bringing new, the new attack surface. We see more risks that we need to tackle down. We make sure that our environment is being safe, that no one can take advantage of the vulnerabilities that exist on these devices and act our environment. So when building the IoT devices and uh, the robotics devices, I'd like to ask you another question. How many of you are thinking about the security aspects that come with it? What is the first thing you're thinking about? So today, from the environment and the customers that we're seeing, and mostly also, uh, of course, in Microsoft, we see uh, that there are actually velocity of uh, IoT devices, robotic devices, we can see them on industrial systems, we see them on IT environments, on uh, dedicated IoT devices, uh, we see the agriculture devices, and much more than that. But what we don't see, usually, is this, I'm sorry, I think it's a different location. Okay. okay, so what we don't see usually is uh, the security mindset that comes with it. Many of these devices are, are uh, built with a security boot, which is not really secure. And they're not really making sure that the operation system will be up to date and are not having any vulnerabilities or can be breached. The second thing is that the vendor rarely provide automated means to patch these kind of devices. So let's say you have a customer and he has a production cell. In the production cell, they, there are a few RTUs, PLCs, and much more devices. However, Siemens, Schneider, or any other vendor that 
is pretty known industrial environment, uh, is publishing a new vulnerabilities that are actually exist on this kind of devices. But your customer is saying, if I'm going to change one of these devices, it's going to cost me a lot of money because these devices need to function. So we can't really patch them, but what we can do? What we can do is to monitor these devices and to make sure there is no internet connectivity to it, to make sure that there is no remote access that someone from outside can exploit and enter to this device. So uh, when we're talking about the top IoT and OT challenges for CIOs and also for CISOs, we see that the IoT devices and the new robotics are pretty essential because they can bring efficiency. However, these security devices are the, mo the, less, the most less secure compared to all the other devices. And the reason for it, they are not agent-based. It's very, very rare to see IoT devices that have agents that can be run upon them and to make sure that they are secure. So this is why they are not really managed. And the 31% of the organization uh, uh, would like to stop the adoption of the IoT projects due to security concerns because they think in that adopting this kind of solution can bring new attack surface. And this is why they less supporting in this kind of uh, ideas. We see that there are three main actually uh, technology gaps. The first one is that it's very hard to have a full inventory with all the IoT robotic devices. And the reason for it is that they are not managed. In order to get this kind of devices, we will need to uh, monitor them and also to support on industrial protocols, on unreal protocols, and sometimes it's very hard to get to the location of this type of devices, like the PLCs and RTUs. The second thing is that this, the IoT devices are not really that secure, and this is why they feel less confident with adopting them. And 61% um, thinking that to identify if IoT devices are compromised will be pretty hard. So that, what does it mean uh, to have a risk on the environment? It can affect the business in three main ways. The first one is the financial part. And in case we'll have uh, malware in our environment, it can shut down factories. And in case it will shut down these factories, like uh, the last uh, ransomware of WannaCry, NetPedia, LockerGata, and much more, um, the business can lose money. And eventually, everything comes to cost. The second thing is the IP theft, and this one is more common on manufacturing. In case someone will have uh, accessibility to our environment, it will be able to get the information and even sensitive uh, formulas or any other ideas and to use it for his own profit. And the third thing is safety. Uh, probably um, who here in the audience have heard about right on attack? So I see that not <laughs> all of it. So actually, Triton attack uh, have it actually happened on petrochemical plant on Saudi Arabia, and uh, someone get access between IT device to OT device, which was HMI machine, which neither electric uh, products and then he succeeded to enter to PLC of Schneider and to download configuration file and just exploit this kind, I mean, to shut down this kind of PLC and of course that he damaged and made also financial loss to this plant. Uh, 
Um, last year, Microsoft announced on Betalog. Someone here in the audience ever heard about uh, Betalog? <laughs> okay. Um, so, Betalog allows to attackers to run a malicious code through a vulnerable memory function. Microsoft research team has succeeded to uncover a series of critical memory allocation vulnerabilities in IoT devices. Um, these vulnerabilities were pretty severe and they were involved also with a real-time operation system, uh, RTOS embedded software, SDKs and standard libraries. But the important thing about it is that RTOS actually affects on multiple devices, on multiple vendors, on multiple equipment. So someone that taking advantage of this kind of vulnerable, of, uh, vulnerable device can connect to it and also to configure code which shouldn't function. So the next question probably will be, so now that we know we have Bedarock and we know all the other systems that are out there, what can we do in order to mitigate this kind of, uh, of devices? So the first thing will be to patch. Patch them, have the latest software uh, to update the version that they are, connect that they are uh, including and to make sure that they are functioning. The second thing, in case you can't really patch, because as we said, some of these devices, they are in a really sensitive environment. So what we can do is to monitor them. By monitor them, we can get all the information, the connections that associate with these devices to understand what is the behavior of them in the network and to make sure that no one from outside will have accessibility to these kind of devices and will take advantage of this kind of vulnerable uh, vulnerabilities that we already know about. The third thing is to reduce the attack surface by actually getting understanding where there are devices that have internet connectivity and to make sure that there are no connectivity from outside to these devices. Because we don't know we, do, we uh, sorry. <laughs> we don't want that someone from outside will connect to these devices and uh, take advantage and started to run any operations which we don't want him to do. And the fourth thing is segmentation. We can, because we have all the IoT devices, robotic devices, and as you know, there are many devices which are not really defined. And the problem here is, I'm sorry, the problem here is a definition. We can see IoT devices on IT environments, we can see robotic devices uh, such as on such as the elevators or doors on BMS systems. We can see devices uh, like the drones that just presented here, and they are connected to many different points. So the question is, how can we get all this information to make sure that it is segmented and there is no connections with other sources? So with that, in order to allow zero trust uh, segmentation for robotics, we have a few recommendations. The first one is verify explicitly. Implement least privileged access, assume compromise. That means that we would like to see who is going to access this device to make sure that the engineer or any other guy that's going to access it is authorized to do so. The second thing is to apply a basic hygiene, patch where possible. If there's a possibility to patch, patch them. Make sure that they are updated with the latest um, software. And of course, even more than that, to implement multi-factor authentication. Make sure that your employees are trained and knows how to react and to make sure that there is no breach in the security to these devices. The third thing is to implement continuous monitoring solution, NDR solution. Um, see that you can 
understand the connection between these devices, what are the abnormal behaviors, what are the, uh, if there's any, let's say, connection that shouldn't be allowed between IT station and IoT devices, that it's only from someone that is authorized to do so, to avoid any future issues. And the fourth thing, when having incident on IoT devices, send all of them to a security monitoring system to make sure that there's someone in the SOC station that investigate it, understand what is the security risk that come with it, and knows how to react, how to proactively understand. Think, think about that when having these devices on sensitive environment, if someone will enter to one of the devices that uh, you sell to your, to your customers and just use it in order to hack and to spread any ransomware to other devices, these devices, this environment won't function anymore. And if that cause, it can bring to a really large financial cost, which we prefer not to, <laughs> to have. So I think I have some more time. I think it's the last one, the second. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, questions? Any questions? Okay, thanks. All the IoT and OT incidents is part of Sentinel. Sentinel is the same tool where we're investigating all the alerts and incidents that's coming from OT and the IoT and also from the IT space, the cloud and uh, it's allowing us to collaborate between all the different attacks and uh, uh, incidents that happen in over the organization and to see what were the kill chain, where the ransomware have passed in the first time, uh, what were the most malicious devices that were infected. So this is why it's very important not only like you mentioned, to support the alerts and incidents on this device, but also to share them with a SIM system and a SOL system to make sure that there are playbooks that's going to uh, evaluate them and assess, whew, I'm sorry, <laughs> and assess what is the risk that's associated with them. Thank you very much. Thank you.